So we made out our flight plan from Greenville, South Carolina to Columbia, South Carolina. But sometimes things don't always go as planned. So let's discuss what would happen if we were on our way, but we had to divert for one reason or another. So let's say that we're almost to Columbia. We've almost made it to the point where we would begin our descent, but some afternoon thunderstorms have popped up unexpectedly and are covering this area. So we decide we need to divert. And maybe we choose to divert to this airport here, Aiken, South Carolina. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say what heading, what logical heading will get me going in that direction. Because I wouldn't want to continue toward the turbulence and thunderstorm and lightning. If I am going to divert, I should pick a logical heading and turn the aircraft that way. It doesn't have to be exact at this point, but knowing if I'm here, this would be south. So perhaps like a heading of 200 might work. So I would immediately turn the airplane and start flying a heading of 200. The next thing I would do is consider, do I need to change my altitude for direction of flight? Well, I was flying this direction on a heading of one four, or excuse me, a magnetic ground course, I think it was like 143 or something like that, which called for an um, odd plus 500 altitude. Now I've turned and I've started uh, traveling to the west side, so I need to change my altitude. Now because I'm going to come in here and land, it would make more sense to go a thousand feet lower than it would a thousand feet higher. So once I've turned to a heading of about 200, I would go ahead and descend down to um, 4,500. I would also notify ATC of my intention, so I would tell them I'm going to divert uh, on a heading of 200 toward Aiken, and I'm descending I could say 5,500 descending 4,500. Um, if I wasn't too sure on the heading, um, then I could always ask for vectors. I could ask ATC to vector me to Aiken. Um, and then once I've, I'm on that heading, I would use my navigation equipment in the airplane to fine tune and uh, make sure that I'm heading toward the airport. So now this would be a time that I could use the GPS direct or I could use VORs or whatever I wanted to to kind of fine tune and make sure that I get to that destination. Now the next thing is I need to measure the distance. So we ha should have our plotter handy in the airplane. Or of course if you have plugged it into the GPS, um, it's going to tell you the distance as well. But um, we'll go ahead and use the plotter. Remember, make sure you have the spinny side up and you're using nautical miles, not the statute side. And if we measure our distance from um, Aiken to uh, where we our position was, it looks like right about 35 miles, and that's 35 nautical miles. So now we want to know, well, how long is that going to take us? And we don't have a bunch of time to sit here and remake out a whole flight plan. We're kind of doing it on the fly, and we're going to be landing shortly, so we need to just kind of use a quick method. So if I were flying this way, um, and we had the winds 20 knots coming behind me, kind of from my le uh, right rear of the aircraft, and that gave me a 15 nautical mile per hour push, but now I'm going to turn this way, then it looks like the wind is going to be right off my wing. So that's not going to really be a headwind or a tailwind, so basically I would probably be flying a ground speed of my true airspeed, and on our flight plan form we came up with 105. So if I turn this way, I'm going to have to descend to 4,400, and or excuse me, 4,500. We've measured the distance is about 35 miles, and we figured that our speed is going to be probably about 105, 105. So now we can use our E6B to quickly come up with how long it's going to take us. Well, if we're flying 105 uh, knots, and we're going to go 35 miles, then it looks like it's going to take us 20 minutes. So it should take us 20 minutes to fly from our current position to the airport, but um, it's also going to take us maybe another 10 minutes to fly the traffic pattern. So I would say that we're going to be on the ground in about 30 minutes. So then we want to know, well, how much fuel would we burn? Well, we knew from our flight plan by looking through the POH that our fuel burn was going to be about 9 gallons per hour, and we're going to fly a half an hour, so it's logical to say that we're going to use four and a half, maybe five gallons of fuel by the time we turn the key off. 
Okay, the next thing we want to think about is, hey, we didn't prepare to go here, so I don't know what the weather is, and I also don't know um, if there's any notams. Uh, perhaps the airport's closed because they're working on the runway, or maybe there's an air show here today. I don't know. So it would be best to um, call the flight service station airborne and ask if there are any notams for Aiken. And even if you're out of range to reach the, um, to be able to receive the ASOS or AWOS, the flight service station can give you the weather that far away as well. So we'd like to call the flight service station and get an update for the weather and any notams at that airport. So on your check ride, one of the tasks you have to prove to your examiner is that you understand how to divert. So you'll start out on your cross country flight plan and then the examiner at some point is going to have you divert. So you're going to go through this step process. First, you're going to pick a logical heading, turn the airplane right away and start flying that direction. The next thing you're going to do is consider your altitude. Should you climb or descend for your direction of flight? The next thing is you may now navigate using your navigation equipment. Use your GPS, use your VORs, whatever you need to. You could call ATC and ask for vectors if you wanted to. Um, the next thing is measure the distance. So if you have your plotter handy, you can certainly use your plotter. If you have GPS, the GPS of course is going to tell you the distance. Let's say you didn't happen to have either one in your airplane. We can get a very uh, quick ballpark by using things that we know. We know that class C, for example, is five nautical miles from the um, center to the inner ring, and we know it's 10 miles to the outer ring, which means this is 15 miles and this is 20 miles. So I can always judge that way. Another way I could do it is I could take my pencil and get the distance from here to here and then put it on the longitudinal lines because if I start on this latitude line, for example, each little tick mark going north or south represents one mile. So if I put my pencil down and said, okay, it's the length of my pencil, and then I drop my pencil on the latitude line and count up, then I can see that's 10, 20, 30, about 35 miles. And that will also give me a very quick reference on the distance. Okay, the next thing is we want to know how long it's going to take us to get there. So we can um, just estimate our ground speed if we didn't have GPS, or you could certainly pull the ground speed from your GPS. But consider, you know, you're, if you're changing directions, your ground speed is most likely not what you had calculated on your flight plan because you're going to have a change with the wind. Okay, the next thing is be sure that you have enough fuel to make it to the airport that you've chosen to divert to. And then you need to get an update of the weather and the notams at that airport.